Good morning, everybody. I'm Eureka John, and you are on Eureka Street Crypto Hub, broadcasting live from Leander, Texas. It is 5.46 in the morning, and it's uh, October 4th, 2021. And yeah, it's a new month. <clears throat> and I'm broadcasting from, where am I broadcasting? Leander, Texas. <laughs> And uh, I do this every single morning. For those of you who don't know, this is my video blog. And I jump on every single morning, kind of giving an update of the crypto market, crypto news a little bit, some crypto concepts, and uh, just talking about things I'm learning about in crypto. Um, I, I'm learning every single day in this space. The space is constantly progressing and constantly developing. So uh, it's it's amazing to try to keep up with. And I've learned so much since I got into this crypto space about lots of different disciplines and subjects and uh, and and just the market in general. So it's the Wild West. It's ever expanding. It's ongoing and it does not stop every single day something is going on and if there's nothing going on then i can just talk about the amazing history in the cryptocurrency world right now i mean think about all the the cypher punks you know, from the the 80s and 90s and all that rich history in there and you probably don't know what i'm talking about and if you go to the nakamoto institute.org you'll see all these documents of all these amazing cypher punks and all this history that happened and the entire struggle in 90s in the 90s that most people did not know was even going on with um, the people versus the government trying to listen in on every single move. And then now with our technocratic giants now listening in on our every single move with all our Alexas, what we fought so hard against is now has now come to fruition in our homes. But uh, uh, it's just amazing that struggle and that fight that they went through and then how it developed into cryptocurrency into anonymous um, cash basically anonymous digital cash was the goal for people to be able to enter the digital world that we are in and moving into now in the metaverse and do be able to, to have cash because cash is wonderful you can pay your long guy you can do anything anonymously and you don't have to be tracked and traced and and uh, yeah um so when you go into the digital world, then you leave a paper trail. Every single transaction you make on your visa or your check card, every time you get gas or whatever, it is logged and people can find you wherever and whenever. And you know, some people say, well, that's not a bad thing. I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah, you're not doing anything wrong for now. Um, you know, wait until maybe the government decides to tighten the, the ratchets a little bit or goes in a direction that you might not necessarily like um yeah then it might matter for you um we you know we have our rights for a reason so uh anyway i'm not going to go on that pedestal i do want to take a look at uh coin gecko and see what's up all right so let me refresh this page here and i don't really follow i mean i follow price but like i don't sit there and try to graph it in technical analysis with it it's just not my shtick um so but i do look at it and i of these kind of like i follow the back of baseball cards <laughs> you know i like looking at some numbers and stats but i don't obsess over them and uh deal with all the candles and and try to predict the future and all that stuff but, uh it's not my my bag man um so bitcoin forty seven thousand six hundred and sixty five dollars and seventeen cents um i've been dollar cost average for quite a while now um ethereum same thing three thousand for three hundred and forty four dollars eleven cents also been dollar uh, I've been sitting on some Cardano for quite a while, uh, for about a couple of years now. Uh, Tether, dollar, uh, Binance, four nineteen eighty six, Solana, one sixty seven fifty one. Never ended up buying into that. Um, yeah, maybe I should. Maybe I'll be looking back a year from now, being like Cardano was only one hundred sixty seven dollars a year ago. Um, I don't know. XRP, a dollar three. Uh, USDC a dollar to stable coin, polka dot thirty dollars and eighty cents, eighty eight cents, D doge twenty one cents, Terra forty six twenty eight, nipping right at the dog's heels. So, um, we have Avalanche sixty six forty three, Uniswap twenty five seventeen, Binance USD gets kicked down to fourteenth place because all these other good projects um, are coming on up. I'll go ran two dollars. I need to do some you know, coverage of Algorand. I haven't really talked about it that much. 
um, or at all, really, because um, I don't really understand it. So I need to 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 take a look. And uh, yeah, Jane Link twenty six forty three. Uh, Litecoin one sixty six seventeen. I mean, everything's kind of up from what it was last week. Axie Infinity has been on an absolute tear. Um, yeah, it is a pay to play and not not pay to play, but to earn to play, play to earn <laughs> they call type of game. Um, yeah, and I don't, I haven't played it yet, so maybe I need to just dig in and play it just to see what it's all about, um, so I can talk about it, um, just like I did with, uh, you know, Perpetuals, um, a couple weeks ago, and I lost my butt on it, but, uh, you know, at least I can talk about it now, and I understand it, so I, I kind of need to do the same thing with Axie Infinity, um, Polygon, Dollar Twenty Seven, and, uh, ICP 4846, Tezos, uh, <laughs> For the longest time, Tezo sat at like three dollars and fifty cents, and just if, I haven't even looked at Tezos in forever. So now it's eight ninety three. Okay, uh, is that because of inflation? I, mean, I don't know. Tell me something good about Tezos. Uh, yeah, and besides the fact that it was one of the first staking blockchains, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Filecoin sixty six ninety two. Uh, Stellar. 30 cents and V chain 10 cents Ethereum classic 5193 um, I did hear an interesting perspective from a listener on Odyssey about Ethereum classic and why he was bullish on Ethereum classic Bitcoin and Monero those are the three that he picked out and um, he's a purist as far um, back in was it 2018 or 2017 or something like that I don't know or maybe it was before that. I don't know it was a while back um, no maybe it was like 2014 or 20 I don't know it was a while back. <laughs> Ethereum, yeah, it was like 2014, I believe. Ethereum went through a, a hack in which money was just being drained out of the DAO. And, and uh, uh, it was millions of dollars. And um, somebody just needed to put a stop to it. And this is a crucial point in Ethereum's history where they had to decide because, you know, they wanted to follow along the ideals of pure decentralization. And... Uh, you know, the, Ethereum was an experiment. I mean, it still is. All this is an experiment. But, you know, how far do you go to save your project if millions of dollars are being just drained out of it right before your eyes and the only thing stopping you is you compromising on your principles of decentralization when you hold the key to be able to stop that. And so that's what they did. They ended up stopping it and saving the funds and uh, they created a fork, which is, another blockchain sprouted off of that original one and the ethereum kept going which is ethereum classic now and the ethereum as we know it today is a fork of the original chain that got hacked um nothing like that has happened since and it was a lesson learned and it was the very first attempt at trying to deal with some kind of hack like that within a DAO that i know of and um yeah you know we have ethereum now as a result from that so ethereum classic um the people that that follow ethereum classic propose to be purists in the fact that they never compromise their ideals even in the face of losing millions of dollars you know I, well this is like a test of humanity right here and so <laughs> yeah um yeah people say that the computational um uh genuineness I, I can't find the right word for it. integrity computational integrity is behind ethereum classic and not ethereum so interesting argument um you can read a lot about that in camila russo's book um the infinite machine and it's a it's a really good book uh just all about the history of ethereum so it's definitely worth checking out okay anyway so let's um i was just uh, scrolling through and i i wanted to take this episode and just kind of talk about a little uh project that i found interesting it's a Monday, you know, I, I go to work, you know, it's just kind of a blah, you know, a compound, got a hack five time, I'll talk about that, uh, let's see here, uh, here we go, this is it, another Theta partnership, Meter IO seems to think so, bullish, all right, so what is Meter IO, I know I talked about Theta yesterday, um, but let's take, let's take, a, take a look here, all right, meter. I was like, huh, okay. Well, Theta it seems to be doing a lot lately. Um, meter IO is the fastest. Sorry, I'm trying to eat my apple and get all this done. It's the fastest, most scalable, 
most scalable and decentralized layer two of Ethereum. It guarantees secure interconnection and fastest transfer of assets between blockchains. So it claims to be a layer two scaling solution of Ethereum and claims to be decentralized, claims to be the fastest, and claims to be scalable. That's what they all seem to claim, right? <laughs> I mean, I've, heard, I've heard this many times now, all right? Um, but uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Meter is built on top of some of the most advanced consensus algorithms, hot stuff. We ensured backward compatibility with Ethereum. Existing ETH dApps can migrate to Meter with almost no changes. All right. So um, Meter is a separate blockchain. It is not, um, it's not like Arbitrum or anything like that. Um, okay. So, and it's not roll ups or anything like that. So DeFi devs join us and build on meter. Why us? Here are some reasons. Here are some Ethereum RPC compatible. We are Ethereum RPC compatible, but also have unique features being front running MEV resistant and have a stable low cast, low, low gas cost plus high throughput and instant finality. We have connections to multiple blockchains and access to on different chains, we have highly decentralized validators to ensure censorship resistance and security. Um, and I did look into some of the interoperability and it uh, looks pretty amazing, but that's not why I'm interested in this meter. So I will show you. Um, let's go to meter.io. Um, where are you at? Okay, I had you pulled up. Scale and connect the financial internet. Um, Meter is a high performance infrastructure that allows smart contracts to scale and travel seamless, seamlessly through heterogeneous blockchain networks. Okay, what does that mean? Well, first of all, I want to talk about what attracted me to this so far to, to look further into it is it's it's um, pegged to 10 kilowatt hours of electricity as its financial backing. It's not pegged to a dollar or some kind of stable coin and it's not pegged to itself. It's not. Yeah, it's it's you know, not just out there hanging, and it's not uh, pegged to gold or Bitcoin or even or Ethereum. Um, it's pegged to electricity. <laughs> All right, hence the name meter. So let's watch this little video real quick and see what's up with it. All right, I'm gonna get this YouTube to pull up. All right, is it gonna have a commercial? Oh my god! All right, so I'll this chat through this commercial. I'll try to hit skip ad real years. quick. Gemini I've seen this lady's a face a million times. All right. In okay, here we go. Crypto. Skip out. Man, it's a minute and 41 seconds. What if your seconds. purchasing power could be the same in 20 years as it is today? Meter is a global currency that anchors the power of blockchain to the stability of electricity, creating a revolutionary financial network with low volatility. Like Bitcoin, Meter uses proof of work mining to create MTR digital currency. Unlike Bitcoin, however, Meter adds proof of state consensus to the equation and separates currency creation from record keeping. This keeps the network secure, lightweight, and lightning fast. Meter payments are made using MTR Global Currency, while those same payments are validated with MTRG governance tokens. The dynamism of this economic design keeps participants engaged, incentivized, and honest. The value of MTR Global Currency is pegged to the cost of 10 kilowatt hour, KWH. Because electricity prices are globally competitive, they're remarkably stable and outperform the value harboring characteristics of volatile cash assets like the dollar, euro, or yen. That means Meter is better at retaining consistent purchasing power that not only cash, but also Bitcoin, Litecoin, and stablecoins pegged to fiat. Meter's ultra-high performance blockchain can handle thousands of transactions per second, putting it on par with the scaling powers of today's credit networks. With Meter, your payment instantly arrives at its destination safe, sound, and worth the same as when it left. Make money move with Meter, the future of digital currency. Anyway, so there you go. Um, I, I think it's a pretty interesting concept, the whole idea of something being paid to 10 kilowatt hours of electricity i mean i look at my electricity bill and i feel like it's gone up a lot um but uh um it, apparently i was looking at some graph here um and i can't find i can't seem to find the graph again but uh it's maybe it's in the blog here but it's where they um did a comparison of the price of electricity over 
a certain amount of period of time and uh and then electricity adjusted for inflation and of course you know it went up but once adjusted for inflation you see that the line is fairly stable and even and the price of electricity worldwide has not really gone up that much um so um i'm trying to see if i can find that uh if I find that, I will I will put it up here. But I just thought it was a fascinating graph because um, I didn't know that um, that electricity hasn't really moved. And this this um, project here, Meter.io, is a uh, a hybrid blockchain blockchain um, proof of value. So it has two blockchains. Um, it has proof of work to mine the meter, and it has proof of stake to do all the transactions and stuff like that so a uh, different way to keep it uh to keep it stable so uh why meter your favorite ethereum dap shouldn't be have to be costly to be fast and highly decentralized financial assets should flow freely among blockchains so it's highly decentralized meters hot stuff based consensus allows thousands of validator nodes making meter the most decentralized layer two for ethereum it's fast and scalable. Meter processes thousands of transactions per second, and transactions are confirmed almost instantly. And then interconnected. Meter Passport allows assets and smart contracts to travel uh, and communicate heterogeneous across heterogeneous blockchains for the best price, liquidity, and yield. And uh, some of their partners here are Nest, Polygon, Origin, Anchor, um, Elrond, Moonbeam, Chainlink, Chad, um, I mean, Harmony. I mean, I just, yeah. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this passport here. So it's the timeline. Um, it, it's it's compatible with Theta blockchain, as you saw, and it's compatible with a bunch of different blockchains. So let's go take a look here. Uh, let me see. Uh, where did I find all this stuff yesterday when I was poking around? Um, why meter is different than other stable coins? With the recent shutdown of the basis stablecoin asked us how we're different from other stablecoin cryptocurrency projects out there and how we stand out in a crowded market the we are meter the first uncensorable money that is fast and stable in value our view is that in the future meter will be to money what the watt is to electricity the hour is to time and the degree is to temperature wow it's an outlandish claim but uh, hey the key aspects of meter include inflation resistant yet elastic to changes in economy without oracles not outlandish maybe ambitious okay um it's permissionless yet high performance instant finality and irreversible transaction records financial infrastructure that functions as a side chain to all public chains our technology uses a hybrid consensus model which combines the benefits of proof of work and proof of stake these benefits include sovereign grade censorship resistance randomized fast byzantine agreement thousands of transactions per second are possible in the main chain without sharding Scalable to unlimited transactions per second with side chains and sharding. Separations of currency creation uh, with banking, accounting. So correct alignment of incentives from miners and developers and stakeholders and increased efficiency and security and environmental friendliness. Mining costs comparable to the combined mine budget of the U.S. Mint and U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing for an economy similar to the U.S. Okay. Um, all right. I, let's go take a look at this passport. All right, so where'd you go? Your passport. <clears throat> ah, I'm gonna log in and authorize my wallet. Okay. So from Ethereum to Meter Mainnet. Okay. We'll change this and let's see what's available. Uh, right now we have Binance Smart Chain, Moon River. And meter so moon river is like kusama and polka dot i believe um right over here is moon river where's yeah here's moon river um moonbeam network yeah i believe that's part of the the kusama polka dot network yeah um so there's that and uh, let's go back here to the main meter page where'd you go um <laughs> and there's a little faucet right there if you get coin um proof of value consensus okay all right what is proof of value consensus in our previous article we explained the need for separating the currency creation and record keeping consensus to correctly align the incentives of all, of all the players and create a unique account for the crypto world 
Division of power is one of the key concepts for consensus design. In the physical world, gold miners who produce the gold have always been separated from bankers and accountants who keep records of financial transactions. Similarly, the proof of value consensus separates these functions and to act as a hybrid proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of work has three main functions in the meter. To create the new currency, generate true randomness, and instrument the notion of time. Meter is completely permissionless. Anyone can join the network and start creating the currency. However, in proof of work consensus, we've created a special change that ensures the cost of production for meter tokens is consistent and unable to be gamed. This means that each meter token will only be created when it makes sense economically. So it's going to be very, very stable um, and no, not a lot of volatility. So the proof of work meter miners are like the physical world's gold miners. They invest more in mining when the price of meter is high and they reduce their spending or shift their computational capacity to mine other currencies when the price is low. Um, their profit maximizing behavior will naturally create discipline in meters monetary policy. I'm not exactly sure, but they will ramp up whenever the price is low and then they will uh, pull back um, their mining whenever prices are high. So that's a way to provide stability. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through that graph. Uh, proof of stake is responsible for record keeping in meters blockchain system to prevent censorship. Meter allows a big pool of validators, um, at the beginning at the participating nodes that manage the transaction records are what the validators are. And at the beginning of each epoch, a group of validators will be randomly selected from the validator pool to form a committee committee. Um, so it's randomized delegation, I guess. So during the epoch, only the validators within the committee committee can read and vote on the blocks. Following a Byzantine fault tolerance style consensus, this ensures high performance and instant finality, both of which are desirable for financial applications. The proof of work miners and proof of stake val validators maintain separate chains. The two chains only interact at the end of every epoch when they cross reference each other. This ensures it's impossible to go back in time and create new chains. This is called a long range attack. Because of the changes in the economic and design game design, this proof of value consensus is able to combine both the benefits of proof of work and proof of stake while avoiding the problems in both. As we know, in Bitcoin or other proof-of-work cryptocurrencies, the network hash rate directly correlates to the price or market cap of that cryptocurrency. In Meter, the hash rate only co correlates to the increment of market cap. Such a difference makes Meter more environmentally friendly than any traditional proof-of-work cryptocurrency. Based on our estimation to support an economy similar to the United States, the annual money spent in mining would be similar to the annual budget of the U.S. Mint and U.S. Engraving and Printing. Proof of work is able to introduce true randomness and notion of time. These are important to prevent censorship and attack, which is extremely hard in proof of stake. The combined proof of value consensus of proof of work and proof of stake is therefore permissionless, green to mine, and extremely fast while remaining highly decentralized. We have a target of a thousand transactions per second and a pool of more than 1,000 validators on a single chain. There's nothing preventing meter from further unlimited scaling through sharding and side chains. Um, so what are your thoughts on proof of value consensus mechanisms? So interesting. It's kind of like the middle child. It takes the best of both worlds. I mean, I'm a middle child. I know how it works, right? You know, you, you, you try to, to make everybody get along. Um, so proof of work. Um, yeah, it, it has the, um, the stability, um, the, the ability to prevent censorship, censorship and attack, um, the decentralization, and then you know you have proof of stake over here, um, <laughs> which is more environmentally friendly. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, interesting stuff here. So let's go and let's take another look back at the homepage. I'm gonna find this visual uh, to show you and uh, kind of show you how it works here. Where did it go? Um, I guess maybe it's in documentation. Let's see. I saw it. I was reading through the documentation and I saw it. I done saw it. Um, all right. Welcome to Meter. Meter is built with DeFi infrastructure with the built in crypto native meta stable cryptocurrency MTR. So there's the MTR token, which is mined, and then it's auctioned off to, um, as the, to create the MTRG token, which is the proof of stake token. All right, so we'll, um, when I find this graph, you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. All right, 
Meter functions is a highly decentralized, high-performance sidechain for Ethereum and other public chains. We are working to achieve three things. Meter's DeFi infrastructure, uh, complete Bitcoin's original vision, and create a meta-stable sound money independent of the fiat system. Completely independent, because it's pegged to electricity. Address performance issues that current chains are facing with our hybrid proof-of-work, proof-of-stake, plus hot stuff consensus that is backward compatible with Ethereum. And then interconnect with other public chains like Ethereum and run as a sidechain to enable scaling and value interaction. Okay, so let's read a little bit more and I'll try to pull out the the, the good points here. Uh, meters is DeFi infrastructure with, with a built-in crypto native meta stable currency that functions as a highly decentralized, high performance EVM compatible sidechain for Ethereum and other public chains. And it's interesting how many of these other blockchains are all becoming EVM compatible. Every single other blockchain is becoming compatible with Ethereum. You don't see Ethereum trying to become a compatible with all these others. So when people talk about all these Ethereum killers and you know how Solana is going to take over Ethereum and, or Solana is the, the, the Microsoft and Ethereum is the Apple or whatever, you know, um, no, like everybody's trying to be compatible with Ethereum. I mean, it's just not going to supplant it. I mean, there might be some better blockchains or whatever, but it's still working trying to be compatible with Ethereum. Um, so anyway, the meter system uses proof of work to create a fully decentralized low volatility coin MTR for fees and payments and hot stuff based proof of stake with the MTRG governance coin to validate transactions. This hybrid consensus mechanisms makes meter fast. The system can process thousands of transactions per second, re reaching finality almost instantly and super secure. Um, DeFi da app developers can also use our highly decentralized hot stuff consensus proof of stake chain as an EVM compatible sidechain to increase the speed of scalability of decentralized exchanges, derivative trading platforms, yield farming programs, and other DeFi apps. Um, uh, Meter solves two major problems, the lack of stable decentralized unit of account representing an established value for DeFi applications. It's been pegged to the dollar, a lot of these stable coins, but obviously the dollar is uh, having its issues with the money printer go burr and people are starting to try to find way ways to hedge against that. Um, basically, native cryptocurrencies in themselves are also are too volatile for frequent transactions. Because as of, we just saw last week, Ethereum's been all over the place and other cryptocurrencies are all over the place. You can't really peg anything to it. So uh, issues with scaling and interoperability of currently available blockchains. There's a need for high performance blockchain that is EVM compatible, but it's interoperable between other blockchains to help scale and move them. All right, so here's different ways it can be used. DeFi infrastructure, everyday payments, store value. And then here's the hybrid POV consensus mechanism. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about that. Um, and then they talk about this hot stuff consensus and the difference between Tendermint, which is in Cosmos, or Casper FFG, which is in Ethereum 2.0. Uh, we don't need to go in the, the, the weeds of consensus mechanisms right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's just electricity price index. MTR, um, stable, is a unit of account and medium of exchange for the meter network. It's a fully decentralized, permissionless, low volatility cryptocurrency that is created using SHA-256. Proof of work, the same method used by Bitcoin. Meter uses the cost of production and the proof of work miners arbitraging behavior to establish a long-term equilibrium price for the market. This equilibrium price anchors MTR to the competitive global electricity price, which is more stable in value than any fiat-based um, fiat currency based on historical data. Between 1960 and 2021, electricity prices went up 6.3 times when measured in USD, but stayed the same after adjusting for inflation. And that just shows how bad, look at this, how much inflation has gone up. It's insane. Um, the supply of MTR is uncapped. When demand is higher, miners will expand um, the supply, whereas when demand is lower, the internal MTRG auction process will continuously remove MTR from circulation, reducing supply. This makes the value of MTR neither deflationary nor inflationary. Externally, MTR can be used for everyday payments as a store of value. On the meter network, MTR is used for transaction payments, gas, storage fees, um, and proof of stake validators received for approving transactions. Meter may also be converted to MTRG through a competitive bidding process, and Bitcoin and miners use their hash power to compete for the newly created bitcoins and meter the miners first convert their hash power onto mining credits mtr and then use the mtr to compete for mtrg please refer to on-chain auctions section for more 
uh, information. All right, so, and it talks about how it's more stable than DAI or other stable coins. Um, I mean, this is, this is a pretty fascinating documentation run through if you just take the time to read it. Uh, Whereas MTRG uh, for the proof of stake side of things, Hold on, I want to find this graph just so you can visualize it. Here it is. Okay, on-chain auctions. Okay, so here you have the proof of work mining, and then you have the MTR total supply, so it adds to that supply. And then you have the, the future validators. And then here um, you bid your MTR to buy the MTRG, and then here you get your MTRG. Some of it is burned, um, and then here's the total new MTR after MTRG auction, and then here's some of the MTRG uh, being paid. Uh, brought back to the validators so kind of how that process works i'm out of time i just went over but uh i, I wanted to I, I wanted to at least just touch on the basics and show you this um i'm not this is obviously not a video trying to go into the details and fundamentals of meter but um it's you know just brushing the surface and just being hey i discovered this yesterday this is pretty cool it's pegged to electricity um, it's a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake blockchain. It's compatible uh, with uh, with all these other different types of blockchains, including Theta, um, including um, Kusama, including um, uh, Ethereum, um, and several others. I mean, I just yeah, um, I just don't have. I'll have to dig through and find it all for you. Maybe I don't know. Oh, yeah. But anyway, I just thought it was a pretty cool um, project and just the whole idea of it being you know, pegged to electricity and stuff and being a hybrid blockchain. So, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's Monday. Yeah, yeah blah, blah. Um, I'm going to get my butt to work. I got a day job to do. And uh, tomorrow, who knows what I'll be talking about tomorrow. Who knows whatever I, I end up talking about. It's all completely random, you know. It's just whatever I feel um, like talking about when I get up, honestly. Um <laughs> That's why I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not shilling anything. Um, not trying to be your teacher or financial advisor. I'm just, uh, just a dude talking about cryptocurrency on the interwebs. All right. Um, all right. Well, uh, that being said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang my hat up. All right. Let me get this up here. And um, yeah, you guys have a good day. Be good to each other. All right. Don't be mean in traffic. All right. Bye.